Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i wa ba'd. So now we're on chapter 3, page 33. Characteristics of a student of knowledge. Alright, so this is a very interesting chapter. This chapter, believe it or not, was actually a, a, a series of videos that I actually did a long time ago, and I was putting some of those videos up on social media, and uh, they were just talk. They weren't really talking about. I mean, it was mainly geared towards students of knowledge, but it was uh, it was geared towards students of knowledge with the understanding that the majority of people don't care about seeking knowledge. So, uh, you know, there's basically traits of whatever you're trying to do to be successful in this deed, whether it's seeking knowledge or whatever it is. So that was the whole purpose of the series of videos. And then when I was writing this book, I said, no, nah, I'm just going to go ahead and throw that in there. You know, just take out the stuff from the videos. And I added certain things to it that I didn't get a chance to make and then getting, getting a chance to make the videos for. Because I stopped making those videos a while back. So, all right, so this is, this is that. All right, these characteristics of a student of knowledge. Now, it's not necessary that everybody has to have every single one of these qualities. But it doesn't hurt. And, uh, you know, you definitely... Certain qualities, they're just like, you got no choice. If you don't have them, you're not going to be successful. And that's mainly the first, the first one, and the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one. Like those, yeah, you, you know, you got no choice. If you don't have those qualities, you're going to fail. Period. So, Bismillah. There are many different characteristics that a person should have to be successful in his or her studies. I'm going to mention below the most important traits, inshallah. Number one, alif uh, loss, sincerity. Sincerity means that you are doing this great act of worship for Allah and Allah alone. If you fail to do any act of worship for Allah, the act of worship will not be accepted. Allah said in the Quran, ذَلِكَ هُدَ اللَّهِ يَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ وَلَوْ أَشْرَقُوا لَحَبِطَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ So he said, this is the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whoever he wills from amongst his servants. وَلَوْ أَشْرَقُوا And if they had associated any partners with him in worship, and this includes shirk al-akbar, shirk al-asghar, shirk al-khafi, all forms of shirk, all forms of associating partners, whether it's the major shirk, the minor shirk, or whatever. If they had associated others with him in worship, their good deeds would have been wasted. The حَبَطَ عَنْهُمْ That means that they would, have, they would have acted, but they would get no reward for their actions. All right, so habut al-amal, that means that, the, that you don't get any reward. You do the action with no reward, nothing. Allah also said, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَأَنَّ أَشْرَقْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَا تُكُنَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاصِرِينَ So Allah SWT said that, he, you know, that it's been revealed to you. And وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And as, as it was revealed to all the people, to the, to the people before you, to the messengers and prophets before you. And in that shrakt, if you if you were to associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his worship, that again that your actions will have no no reward, that all of your actions will be for naught. And you will very verily you will be from amongst the losers. The losers in this life and the losers in the next life. This makes having sincerity in our actions the most important thing to focus on being that our actions will only be accepted if our intentions are correct. The issue of having sincerity and intentions can be seen in the following hadith and Amir al Mu'minin Abi Hafsa Umar ibn al Khabab, Radiallahu anhu, Qala Samatu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yukul, Inna ma la'amalu bin niyati, wa inna ma likul imra'in ma nawa, Faman kanat hijratuhu ila Allahi wa Rasulihi, fa hijratuhu ila Allahi wa Rasulihi, Waman kanat hijratuhu lid dunya yusibuha or imra'atan yamkihuha, fa hijratuhu ila ma hajra ilayhi. So here this famous hadith from Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that verily all actions are based on the intentions. So everybody is going to get exactly what he's intended. For man kana hijratu ila Allah wa rasuli. So whoever makes, uh, whoever emigrates uh, for the sake of for, for Allah and His Messenger, then that's what his migration is for. It's for Allah and His Messenger. And that's the reward that he's going to get. Women cannot hijra to him. Whoever his immigration is for the dunya, because maybe he's trying to get money, he's trying to do some type of business transactions, or maybe he's got a job overseas and he's, so 
he goes to a Muslim country only to work and to, to get money, then that's what he's going to get. Or a woman for marriage, he goes over for the purpose of marrying that woman and he has to stay in that country because maybe the woman says, you know, if you marry me, you have to stay in this country, you can't leave. So, so he migrates to that country all for the, for the marriage. And he, he, his, his uh, immigration, his migration is exactly for what he made it for. And that's what he's going to get. So if he made it for the woman, he gets the woman. He gets no reward with Allah. And if he made it for business, then he gets the business and get the money, but he's not going to get anything else. Therefore, we have to make sure that our intentions are correct and that we are doing this great act of worship for Allah alone. As far as your intentions, you should intend to remove ignorance from yourself and from others. Allah mentioned in the Quran, Ya ayyuha alladhina aminu ku anfusukum wa ahlikum nara wa quduha al-nas wa al-hijaratu alayha malaikatun ghilabun shidadun la ya'asun Allah ma amarahum wa yaf'aluna ma yukmarun So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the people. He said, Oh you who believe, who? Who it means to what? Protect. Huh? Protect. Yeah, it comes from the word waqa. It comes from the word taqwa. Taqwa comes from this word. All right, waqaf. All right, protect yourself. Qu. This is the fi'l amr. Qu anfusukum. Qu anfusukum. So protect yourself. And wa ahlikum. So after you protect yourself, then you protect your families. But first, you can't protect yourself. If you, you can't protect your family if you can't protect yourself first. So first, you first yourself. So you go out, you get knowledge, and you you start to do righteous actions. And you you work on your sincerity. You get a clause. Now you've worked on yourself. Now you've improved yourself. Now you've gotten to the point where it's like, okay, I'm not good. I, I got to keep working on myself. But now I can start working on other people. Then you work on your family, the closest relatives to the closest relatives. Your wife, your children, your mother, your father, the closest relatives first. And then you go further and further down the line. So protect yourself and your families from the fire. And the wakud, of course, is the... What fuels the fire? What you put into the fire to keep it to keep it going? All right. So he said that the fuel for the fire is is, is people. Well, hijara and what? Hijara. And the stones. And what's the purpose of the stones? Uh, it's the it's the idols. Well, what I'm saying when you put hijara in the fire, what does it do? Increases the heat, doesn't it? Because when those stones heat up, then the heat becomes even even worse. So even the the, the stones and the the, the the ahjar and all this with the people being fueled for the fire, it makes it even hotter. I mean, not like it's not already hot enough, but you know, just as more of a punishment for the people. Alayha malaikatun ghilabun shidan, and this the, this the this fire is overseen. By, by like real, real severe, like Malaikatun Ghilabun Shidad, it means like what? Like very harsh. Yeah, like very harsh and severe, like there's like, they don't show any mercy. No, this is hot, shut up and take it. You know, like that's it, you know, and then every time that they complain, you know, they're just the punishment, you know, yeah, it's just, you know, it's the punishment's gonna keep getting increasing and increasing for them, like with no mercy. So he said, uh, And they don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any of the commands. Everything that Allah tells them to do, they do it. You know, to the, to the people that are help us. So whatever He tells them, punish them, however way, they're going to do it. With no disobedience. And they do exactly as they're commanded. Alright, they do exactly as they are commanded. We are commanded to first protect ourselves and then our families from the fire. And that can only be done with knowledge that was gained through sincerity and acted upon with sincerity. Allah knows best. And this is not a small issue. I mean, a lot of people, they don't, they, they want to like, um, whenever they read these books of students and like about seeking knowledge, and I'm one of those people, I, I'm not, I'm not now, but I was. Where it's just like, you know, I would skip the first, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, sincerity, tough, well, I know what he's going to say at the beginning, right? And you want to get to the stuff, the other things, like, what do I study? How do I remember? How do I do this? Yeah, you can forget all that stuff if you don't perfect these first couple chapters. If you don't have the sincerity and you don't have the taqwa, you can forget. You can forget about every all these other qualities because they don't they don't mean anything without those two. You can have all every single one of these qualities, but if you don't have those first two, you will fail. 
you will fail. So, I mean, that's, that's that. Because there's no way. Because, I mean, that means that if you don't have sincerity, then that means that you fall into what? You fall into shirk. All right? And if you don't have taqwa, then that means that you fall into what? Sins and disobedience and going out of the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you to follow. So if, you don't, if you're doing that, if, those, if you're falling into those two things, how do you, you never be successful in this deed with nothing. I mean, you might be successful in doing it. You know, you see these, these, these dudes that go around, these Jimmy Hiyats and all that, well, they, they get rich, they drive nice cars, they, you know? They, stay little, they, they got some big houses, they see a little bit of success in the dunya, but it's just temporary. Very, very temporary. And their punishment is going to be very, very, very severe. The word taqwa means protection in the Arabic language. By obeying the commands of Allah and staying completely away from His prohibitions, Smacked up. <laughs> All right, you're, you're setting up a protection between yourself and the punishment of Allah. We are commanded to obey Allah to the best of our capabilities. Allah said in the Quran, Fattakullaha mastata'atum, wa sma'u, wa ati'u, wa anfiku khayran li anfusikum, wa man yuqa shuha nafsihi fa ulaika huma muflihum. So here, like, this is the general translation, obviously, so be mindful of Allah, or be fearful of Allah. But, it, you know, again, it's about carrying out the commands of Allah. Carry out the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay away from His prohibitions. And staying away from the prohibitions is the must of autumn. So this is what's, you know, not, no, I'm sorry, that they're carrying out the... Carrying out the commands of Allah, or must of autumn. But the staying away from the prohibitions is, no, you have to stay away completely away from that. There's no it's the bar. So here you you know, whenever you're carrying out the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you do them to the best of your capability. If you can't stand, you sit in prayer. If you can't sit, you you, you know, you lay on your side. If you can't lay on your side, if it's even too painful to move, you just move your eyes, whatever. You know, if you're you're unable to fast because of old age or because of terminal illness, you feed a poor person for every day. So Fattakullah Mastafat. You know, so carry out the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your capabilities. وَاسْمَعُوا And hear. And وَأَطِيعُوا And obey. So when you hear the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you hear them and you obey them and you carry them out. And when you hear the prohibitions, the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited you from, you stay away from them. That's it. You don't start questioning it. You don't justify it. You don't... But, but, but you know, uh, you know, today is Thursday. And, you know, we, you know... There's nothing wrong with doing this on Thursday. Yeah, I'm just making it. I know today's Wednesday, but I'm just, you know. This is how stupid some of the stuff that people say. Like we talked about with the people selling alcohol. You know, well, I'm just selling it to the kuffar. You know, I'm not selling this stuff to the Muslims. And, you know, he doesn't know. He probably sells it to probably 15, 20 Muslims every single day. He probably doesn't even know. How would he know? You know, so. one uh, And spend. And one people. Uh, you know, and, and the khayr on the anfusikum, and this is the, this is the best for you. You know, uh, this is the best, and this is for you. You know, because the only, the one that benefits from the righteous actions is you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need our actions. This is the best, you know, this is the best thing for you. You, this is what we need to do. Allah does not need our actions. And then he said, وَمَنْ يُقَى شُحَ نَفْسِي And whoever saved from the shuha nafsi, the it's protected from his own his own stinginess and selfishness and you know uh, miserliness of their own souls at this day who are truly successful. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you away from this and protects you from your own self and from that evil that's in yourself and from that evil that that, that miserly attitude where you where you're self-centered and you only think about your desires and what you want to do and you're not thinking about the things that you know the commands and the, and the prohibitions. And if Allah protects you from that, then alhamdulillah, you, that's how you're successful. But if Allah doesn't protect you from that, that's how you get destroyed. We can also see the same meaning in the following hadith and Abi Hurairah ta Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr, رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ما نهيتكم عنه فاجتنبوا وما أمرتكم به فأتوا منهم ما استطعتم فإنما أهلك الذين من قبلكم كثرة مسائلهم واختلافهم على أنبيائهم so here Abu, Abu, Abu Hurairah he said that he heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, whatever I, I have prohibited you from, فَاجْتَنِبُوا 
Stay completely away from it. Well, whatever I've ordered you to do, then do it to the best of your capabilities. But verily, the people from before you, they were destroyed because of asking too many questions. They bring too many issues to their prophets. What about this? And what about this? And what should I do with this? And, you know, just asking too many questions. You wait until, you know, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows the state of the people at the time of the revelation. And He knows the state of the people now. He knew the state of the people now before we were in the state that we're in. And he knew it when he was sitting there, sending the revelation down to the Prophet Sallallahu He knew. And then this, this revelation is from now, from not, not from now, but from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu until the Day of Judgment. So he prepared the people with everything that they need to know. So all, the only questions that you need to ask is how to do the things correctly. But what he's talking about is, is all these, you know, these just petty, you know, like a lot of the people, they just go and they just, they see a shit. And they have to think of a question, like, I gotta ask them something, oh my God, Shaykh I gotta ask him something. No, you don't. Go up and give him salams and walk out like everybody else. You don't have to. But they, they, you know, it's just bringing all these questions and different issues and well, for whom Allah and him. And then when they don't get the answer that they want, they go to the Sheikh and but 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 but, but Sheikh Sheikh Fulan said this and Sheikh Fulan said that. Well, you go go back to Sheikh Fulan. What are you asking me for? If you already asked them, you know. So you see all the ikhtilaf, all the, the disagreement with their with their prophets. Where like once the revelation got sent down, you know, look, look what happened with the with the with the Yahoo, with the with Talut. And look at the story. Go back and read that story in Surah Al Baqarah, and you see. They asked the Prophet to send somebody, and then what happened when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the person? Look at what they said. I mean, how is he going to have dominion over us and the kingdom over us, and we're more right, we have more right to the kingdom than him? Well, I mean, what? Because he, because he didn't have the money, but, but Allah had given him all the qualities of leadership and all the qualities that he needed to take, you know, he, he, he sent him for that purpose. But you see, look at them, and when, when they got what they asked for, you see, you know, so that's that ikhtilaf, you know, that, that, and that's what destroyed them, you know, and they started when, when Musa alayhi salam told them to slaughter the, the, the cow, you know, and you saw the ikhtilaf also in Surah Al-Baqarah, so you see, over and over and over, you know, this is what you see from the people, and this is what got them destroyed. So you, you know, you only ask questions seeking the truth, seeking an understanding of what you need to do. If you ask a question, you ask a question for something that you are actually going to do. Don't go up and ask a sheikh a question and say, "Well, you know, uh, you know, uh, what, what, what's is, is it, you know, should a student of knowledge uh, pray at night every single night? Do you think what's your advice, sheikh?" And then he tells you yes, and he starts giving you the hadith about the fall of the praying at night, and then you don't pray at night. What was the benefit of your question? What did you ask him for? If you weren't going to do the advice, you weren't going to take the advice and implement the advice that he told you. If you go up to ask a, ask a sheikh, uh, oh, I'm a, I'm a beginner seeking knowledge, and I'm, you know, I just, I, I just, you know, learned the Arabic language, uh, what should I work on now? And he says, memorize the Quran. And you start memorizing Sahih Bukhari. You know what I'm saying? It's like, or you start doing something else. Well, you know, that's what he told me, but you know, I really want to, what'd you ask him for? What did you even ask him for in the first place? So, us, we keep our questions limited to things that we need to know, that we can't find the answers on our own, and when we get that information, we put it into practice. Otherwise, there's no benefit of these questions. It falls into that category of people just asking these, these useless questions and going up and bringing all these issues to the people, and they're wasting, wasting time, you know? All right, so it says, when it comes to the, he said, when it comes to the commands of Allah and His Messenger, we are told to carry them out to the best of our capabilities. This is that is because we might become silk, sick, silk. <laughs> we might become sick or elderly to the point that we cannot carry out some of the commands completely. For example, a person has an injured leg and he cannot go into sujood. We would tell that person to carry out the commands of Allah to the best of his capabilities. If he cannot pray standing, he should pray sitting. If he cannot pray sitting, he can pray on his side. He has to pray, but he had, but he carries out the prayer to the best of his capabilities. Another person has reached old age and is very ill, so he cannot fast in Ramadan. We will tell that person to do what he is capable of. If he cannot fast, 
He should feed one poor person for every day that he cannot fast. This religion has been made easy for you, for us, as was expressed in the following hadith, and Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, and in Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the deen of Yusuf, and in the deen of Yusuf, فصددوا وقاربوا وأبشروا واستعينوا بالغدوة والروحة وشيء من الدجة. So he said, Abu Huraira, he reported that the Prophet ﷺ said that the, verily this 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 deen has been is is Yusuf and the deen Yusuf has been made easy for you. ولا يشاد الدين إلا غلبة. And nobody goes into any type of extremes or severities or harshness in this religion except for it overtakes him, it overpowers him, it flushes him out. فَصَدِّلُوا وَقَارِبُوا فَصَدِّلُوا what? So the فَصَدِّلُوا uh, like go like, get close to your but like be firm when it comes to it. Be firm. Oh, right? well, how many times have we gone over this idea? We went over this idea in the, in the Ramadan book. Then we went over the hadith in the daily hadith book. Now we're going over the hadith now in, in the... In the like, so get close to your goals. What did you do? Like, what so did you do? It target. Haribu. Haribu. Get close. How do we do this? It's right. So attempt to hit the. Yeah. So what did you do? Haribu. All right. So where am I? Oh, I forgot. Flip the book. So. Uh, yeah. So you know, hit the mark of perfection. Do you know? Hit the hit the target with, with your actions. And if you're not able to hit the target. Then get as close as possible. Well, abshiru. If you do that, well, abshiru. Be rahmatullah. Well, be fadlullah. Well, be ajr min Allah. You know, if you if you if you do exactly what the Prophet said here, saddidu wa qaribu, and you stay away from what he told you to stay away from, well, abshiru. You know, give. You know, you, you receive glad tidings. Allah subhanahu wa taala is going to give you the reward and he's going to give you the assistance that you need to continue carrying out these actions out. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالْغَدْوَةِ وَرَوْحَةِ وَشَيْهِمْ مِنَ الدُّجَةِ And seek help, and to seek help with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the, in these times of the day is to do the, the, to do the worship. So you got the early part of the day, the, la, the, the, the later part of the day, and you got something from the night, from the darkness of night. You know, use these three times to, you know, to get as close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you can, and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these times. However, when we're dealing with the prohibitions, now that's when we're dealing with the commands, it's based on abilities. You do it to the best of your ability. However, when we're dealing with the prohibitions, we are commanded to refrain from them completely. Staying away from the prohibitions is different than carrying out the commands of Allah. When you carry out the commands of Allah, you have to act. And the ability to act might be present at the time or might not be present. Conversely, staying away from the prohibitions does not require any effort on your part because by staying away from the prohibitions, you are refusing to act. Staying away from the prohibitions is actually an absence of action, and as we know, absence of action does not require ability. The bottom line is that a simple person will not be successful in his studies as long as he continues to disobey Allah. This was expressed in a poem from Imam al-Shafi'i, Rahimahullah, in which he said, Shakalti ila waki'in suwa hibdi, fa arashadani ila taraf al ma'asi, wa akhbarani bi an al alma nurun, wa nuru wahila yuhda li asi. So he said, I complained to waki' my poor memory, and he guided me to leaving off sins as a solution, uh, as a cure for my memory, making my memory strong. And then he informed me, wa akhbarani bi an al alma nur. So he said, he informed me that the that this knowledge is new, it's light. And the light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, is not given, it's not given to a sinful person. It's not given to a sinful person. Like, a person who falls into sins, he can, he can maintain the very, very, very rudimentary basics of this deen. But when we're talking about really, really understanding this deen, really, really, you know, getting a, you know, the, the things that are really going to boost the iman and boost your understanding of you know, this dean and the, you know, no, there's no doubt that's not given to a person who's steeped in sins. And the person, if he wants that type of uh, understanding in the dean, then he has to give up sins and he has to give up a sinful lifestyle. Well, Allah must die. Inshallah, we'll stop here.